There's something weird about me. It's weird, but I love it. I can say I kind of grew up with it. When I run and simultaneously listen to music, I can imagine. I can make stories in my head, and I can even write a book about those stories. I can even make some pictures in my head, different pictures, and I can put those pictures together and make a movie. When I imagine, I feel like I can change anything and do anything in my imagination. And more importantly, I can escape from the real world to my imagination. So the other day I was surfing on the internet and I saw an article with a really strange title, Active Imagination. So I read that article and I found out that I can use my imagination to do more than imagining. We all imagine during the day, more or less. In a professional way, this kind of imagination is called passive imagination. In passive imagination, the mind is comparatively passive and doesn't make any effort to picture the images. The images come of themselves to the mind and combine automatically. But there's something new that we call active imagination. Many people throughout history have searched for ways to evolve the mind. The practitioners of different activities like yoga, puzzles, drug taking, education, philosophy, all hope on some levels these activities will work. Now we're going to look at a meditation technique called active imagination that uses focused attention and dreams to evolve the mind. And we're going to look at a person who pioneered it, Carl Jung. Carl Jung was a psychologist who worked in madhouses at the turn of the 20th century and studying the minds of men and women who suffered from mental disorders. He was trying to figure out if it was possible to cure this people or not. But at the start of World War I, Jung had a repeated vision of Europe being destroyed by a sea of blood. As these visions became more and more frequent, Jung soon realized that he was descending into the same type of madness that was torturing the people he was trying to heal. After he overcame this initial shock, Jung understood that he had been gifted an opportunity. If he could figure out a way to heal himself of madness, then he could figure out a way to heal others. This gave him the great courage and hope that he would need a battle against his mind for the right of his own soul. And it was during this inner war that he developed active imagination. So the question is, why does active imagination work? Psychologists, <laughs> psychologists have divided the mind into two parts, the conscious part and the unconscious part. The conscious part of our mind is that small bubble of attention that feels awake and aware of what we're doing right this moment. This focus point of awareness is called the ego. Ego is usually constructed of a name, a personality, and a story. This story is a collection of the impressions, memories, beliefs, and sensations of who you are, where are you come from, what are you good at and bad at, what have you experienced, and a lot of other things. But the unconscious mind is a much larger field of awareness that deals with all the other background processes and sensations like keeping our heart beat or storing our memories. This part of the mind is unconscious because it would be a distraction for our ego from concentrating on the present moment. Active imagination works by encouraging the conscious and unconscious part of the mind to communicate through making conscious attention explore into the unconscious mind. In a simpler way, this method connects the two parts of our mind. So, how to do active imagination? is very simple. All we have to do is to choose one of our most recent dreams, grab a pen and a paper, find a nice place to sit down and meditate, and follow these steps. Step one, find focus. When we start meditating, our mind is usually very active and jumpy. So the first part of our call is to get a hold of our attention and calm the mind. Here's a tip from, here's a tip from me in this first step. Try not to do this technique when your mind is involved with any stressful thoughts or problems. For the first time I tried this technique, it was right after I had an argument with my friend, and it was really hard for me to concentrate and not to think about that problem. The next step, focus on the dream. When the mind has calmed down and we feel we are present, we slowly move our attention into the dream image that we have chosen. In this step, try to choose an image that is vivid and recognizable for you. 
or even if you can, choose an image that you're curious about or you don't know the meaning of it. The first step, allow the unconscious to speak. As you look into your image, you are exploring into the unconscious mind to get the message that the unconscious is trying to communicate to us through that image. We need to start allowing the unconscious to speak. But this step is harder and more important than the other step. So as you explore your unconscious mind, you should stay very. The next step, create an artifact. This step is a little more fun than the other steps. In this step, we must challenge our inner Picasso by taking that paper in front of us and start drawing, writing, painting, whatever we've just experienced in the silence of our mind. The goal here is not to get caught up on trying to make a masterpiece or something amazing or phenomenal, but merely to make that unconscious image into an artifact, which we're trying to discover in the next step. The last step, become an analyst. Now, we must take a break and we must move our attention out of imagination and back to the normal consciousness. When we are ready and grounded, we turn into our art critic and we see we can find the message contained with the piece of artwork we've just made. This is a picture that I draw for the first time I tried this technique. To be honest, at first I was really confused and didn't know really what to do because I didn't conceal much information out of what I've just drawn. But after trying this technique for several times, I started to make stories, descriptions, and explanations of my image. The point is, after trying this technique for several times, you get used to it. And once you get used to it, you enjoy it so much. Now, the usage of this technique. This technique is used to help people to clear their mind, um, resolve, in, uh, resolve interpersonal hidden conflicts and problems and work pressures placed on the conscious ego by the unconscious mind. In my opinion, one of the most useful usage of this technique is that it helps you to clear your mind and understand the meaning of your dream. And especially after I tried this technique, I felt less anxious and more relieved, and especially more focused during the day. As Jung himself said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and then you will call it faith. Thank you.